<laughs> so we are in high school, <laughs> and uh, my brother and I um, were followers of top, top boxing champions around the world. Right. Um, of course, in the eighties, Muhammad Ali, you know, uh, topped the heavyweight, uh, you know, uh, uh, league. Yeah. But then there were other people like uh, Sugary Leonard. <sighs> now, Sugary Leonard um, was a welterweight uh, champion. Uh -huh. The thing about Sugary Leonard is that he had five belts at, at, at one time. And not even Muhammad Ali had achieved that kind of feat. Now, Sugary Leonard's story resonated with us. One, okay. because he came from a very poor background. Um, they struggled to find food, uh, money for, f for a meal. They struggled to find uh, money to access medical care. And, and I think one of the things that really almost knocked him down was to see his father ailing and, um, you know, about to die and they were helpless. They had exhausted um, you know, all channels of all the, all the resources. Yeah. And he thought the only thing he could do was to get into the social, you know, into the uh, gym that was not far from their home, and to start boxing, oh. and and earn enough to care for his parents. Oh. And that's what he did. And he was young. He, I mean, had, pretty handsome. Yeah. And extremely stylish. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he gets to the ring, and you, you are not just watching a fight, no. but you are watching, watching great style. Uh -huh. uh, and, and, and that fascinated us. Now, remember, we didn't have a TV. Mm. So we watched this from our neighbors, you know, uh, privileged neighbors, okay. black and white. Uh -huh. and, and, <laughs> uh -huh. and, 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 you know, that fascinated us. And one day, my brother and I, yes, we are having a conversation, and he said, why don't we begin a boxing club? Oh. And I almost rolled my eyes and I thought, <laughs> oh my goodness. Nonetheless, Waidaka is in Dagoretti. Mm -hmm. That's where we grew up. Okay. I actually went to Dagoretti High School for my O-levels. And we went to the social hall and we realized there had been, in Kenya's heydays, there had been a boxing club, but ah, it no longer existed. Uh -huh. The gloves were disused. There were punching bags. Uh, you know, there was sand around. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so what we did was to get the permission to start a club, which we did, got, uh, you know, some boys around and uh, we hired a coach. We hired a coach by working over the weekends Wow! and over the holidays, yeah. you know, so as teenagers, we worked, um, we organized some things like discos <laughs> to raise money <laughs> for paying the coach for paying the coach. And finally, we entered the club into the it, in, Nairobi, Kenya used to be organized those days mm. when it comes to sporting. Okay. And so there were the inter-social halls competitions and we entered and we fought against the toughest clubs, the Muthurua. Muthurua club is where the champions were born. Okay. And, and we, the Pumwani club, mm -hmm. we fought them and in our first entry, we took the championship. We still remember actually the standard in the sports pages had a headline, Waidaka takes the cup. Bilali the glory. Bilali ended up being the, you know, uh, an Olympics champion okay. uh, later on. Oh, wow. Yeah. So Bilali started off at your club, your boxing club? No, no, no. Club. Uh, he, he, he fought for Muthurua. Oh, for Muthurua. Yeah. Ah. yeah, he fought for Muthurua. So that's how he got yeah. into boxing. Yeah. And then your love for reading. I mean, by the time you're the chairman of the Kenya Publishers Association, yeah. meaning that uh, you have a publishing house, where did your love for reading start? Because it couldn't have started as an adult. These things are burst from... <laughs> Let's start early. Yeah. I, I, I like telling this story because it's about my mom's sisters. Ah. Now, so my mom got married at like 16 uh -huh. or something like that. Yes. So really the difference between my mom and I uh, <laughs> was like 18 years, okay? So her younger sisters were very young. Uh -huh. Her last born sister was like six years older than I was. Uh, bless her, she, she passed away a few years ago. Oh, okay. And both the two last sisters, young, beautiful, and avid readers. They went to good schools, they were smart, and they used to come to holy, uh, on holiday with novels that were this thick. <laughs> Wilberforce Smith, uh, Robert Ludlam, and, and, and all that. 
And you know, we thought that was really cool. They looked really cool and we picked up the habit of reading. Again, in those days, libraries were very organized. Macmillan mm. Library yeah, true. was like our fortress. That's yes. where we went over the weekends. Oh. And that's where we spent our times during the holiday. Kenya National Library Services uh, had a whole section for fiction. Hmm. And so, uh, again, my brother and I would go and we would borrow books. And we would, like over the weekends, it was one, like two books a day. Because then he would be on his bed, on my bed. I read and a book reading. at night, we exchange. Actually, two books in two days. We exchange, and the following day we finish. Once we finished uh, reading the books on our library, and we borrow more, and then exchange with other people. Oh, wow. And that's how we developed oh, wow. the habit of, of reading. Reading, yeah, yeah the yeah. love for books. The love for books, the love for knowledge, yeah. the love for traveling. Yes. You see, one of the things books did for me at an early age is um, because of living with so much brokenness and because of um, you know, all the disappointments that there were in life, and books tended to paint a very different picture uh, you know, of other parts of the world that seemed to function better and seemed to you know, get, things, mm -hmm. get, get things going. Mm -hmm. and, and so that for me, that mm. escape was wow. a pretty good escape yes. to tell me that there can be an alternative mm. narrative to life, that there can be an alternative way of living, yeah. way of thinking, yeah. way of doing things.